whenever we examine or well, whenever uh, whenever we have examined um, thermodynamic cycles, especially for internal combustion engines, or in, in our case for internal combustion engines, we have always employed the same uh, um, the same approach where we said, okay, I have a real well, I have a PV diagram, so I have a cycle in the thermodynamic diagram, and let's write, let's draw the, let's sketch out like a real-ish, a real-ish diagram like this. There we go. Uh, oh, I kind of missed it there, but we'll just um, just disregard disregard this for now. So we've said, okay, what are the what are the basic features of this? Right, we said there's. Uh, well, there's compression, so there's there's pure compression here, and then there's combustion, then there's expansion and exhaust and intake, and then we went and said, okay, well, let's let me fix the initial state, and then I'm going to separate these processes entirely. Right? We're going to idealize the process, and we'll say, okay, we have pure compression, we have heat addition. And the heat addition, this in the case of the auto cycle, is a constant volume. Um, and then the expansion, like this. And then we snuck in this little process that sort of disregards the exhausted intake. And then what we did is we applied the first law. So we said, well, look at this process here. And then use the first law, the first law of thermal. This is a closed cycle. We said, well, the change in internal energy is equal to Q in minus the work out. And then we did some simplification, simplification, simplification. And then we found that, oh, look at that. PV to the K is equal to a constant. And that also gives us that the work is equal to P1 V1, oops, V1 minus P2 V2 over K minus one. So we wrote these two things. After all these simplifications, those two equations are the first law. Um, and then we said, okay, well, let me link then my state one and two with these two, and then I can get the work from one to two. And then we sort of brush that aside and we said, okay, combustion. Well, combustion goes from two to three. This is, so I'm going to look at this process. I'm going to write the first law, change in internal energy is equal to Q in minus the work out. And then we're going to make simplifications. I see there's no work, it's constant volume. And then I found, look at that, T3 is equal to T2 plus Q in over CV. Uh, and then we can link our states two and three, and it's also an ideal gas. So I know that P3 over P2 is equal to T3 over T2. Okay. So then we can link our stages two and three together. And then we keep doing this from state to state. And then we reassemble all the states to get the efficiency of the ideal cycle. And it's all interesting, except now I can't test real things. Uh, I cannot test like uh, uh, the timing of ignition because I've in separating these processes, I have absolutely enforced that combustion starts at this point. It is instantaneous, and it has to be. It has to completely follow compression, and compression is a completely separate process. But in real engines, ignition starts before you reach. Here, this extend a bit further. Ignition starts before you reach top dead center. And it takes a certain amount of time for combustion to occur, all the time to go through this compression and then back out. It's not much time, but it's still time. So part of combustion extends into the expansion stroke or the expansion movement of the piston, even though the pressure is still rising. But I can't test these with my ideal cycle. So now we're going to employ a different approach so that we can solve this numerically. And actually test some of these, um, so we can actually test some of these um, um, concepts or, or details or parameters of the cycle. So in order to do this, I am not going to, uh, I am not going to um, separate the different processes first and then test them with the first law. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the first law and then see where this where this leads us in writing a differential equation so that we can solve the first law as we go along. We're gonna start at one and say, okay, here's what's happening. There's a little bit of heat transfer and there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Where do I go to the next point? And then we're going to march along these curves and then we're gonna to get to a location where ignition starts and now there's a little bit of combustion 
So the curve will change and we're going to march, we're going to solve this numerically with a really powerful calculator, which we call a computer. Okay. So let's, uh, let me give myself some room, but I'm gonna keep, uh, let me erase everything up there, Peter. Okay. So here, I'm gonna draw a nice little PV diagram here in the corner because it's always good to have a PV diagram to guide us through the night, PV. And I'm gonna draw a real-ish looking, I mean, it's probably not real looking. We'll see what real looking diagrams looks like. There we go. Looks like a shoe. Okay. Looks like a leg and a foot with a really tiny ankle. All right. So at any point, we're actually going to write two equations. So at any point inside this cycle, uh, at any point where the intake and the exhaust valves are closed, this is a closed system. So when intake valves and exhaust valves are closed, then this is a closed, sorry, I said closed cycle. It's a closed system. Um, what, is the, what is the first law for a closed system? The change in internal energy is equal to Q in minus work out. And Okay, uh, let's carry on. So let's see. So the change. Well, let's let's first um, let's make this for a, a really. So this is a finite change. Now this is going to. This is the the. So the finite change delta u in going from this position to the next position in the cycle, which is really close. So if these two are are, if these two are very close to each other, then this becomes a du. Is going to be equal to delta Q in a small, so this is an infinitesimally small change in internal energy, is equal to uh, delta Q in, which is a very uh, small amount of heat transferred minus a small amount of work done by the system. And this is going to happen over a certain amount of time. So I'm just going to use a huge mathematical shortcut. I'm just going to say this is all happening over a small amount of time like this. And my notation is kind of screwed up, but we're going to fix this in a minute. Um, actually, no, hold on. Let me, let me backtrack so that here this will have the advantage that we won't make the mathematicians mad just now. Uh, so du is equal to, okay. Um, Yes, and then my small, I just want, I want to first, um, my little element of work, this is the first approximation we're going to make, is I'm going to assume that I'm dealing with, uh, assume we have a simple substance. So a simple substance um, is, uh, or a simple fluid, uh, is one where we can only interact, is, among other things, is one where we can only interact with it with boundary work, with PDV work. So that my small amount of work out is actually a DW out, which is equal to PDV. It's, it's a pressure times a change in volume. So DU is equal to, and then my delta Q, I'm actually going to have a, a well, I'll have a model for this. I'm going to have a dQ dt. This is a Q dot. It's how heat is coming in or what rate heat is coming into the system times whatever amount of time that I'm going to consider minus PDV. Yes. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, okay. This is fine. Um, then we have Let's see, so du, what's a change? Well, the change in internal energy for, uh, for an ideal gas is equal to, for one which doesn't uh, change, um, 
mass is going to be m c v d t. I'm going to we're going to restrict our, our our analysis in this course for constant constant k and c v. It makes it a little bit more difficult if c v changes with uh, with pressure and temperature and so on. But for now, let's just leave it like this. So m c v d t because the mass of so my little chunk inside the cylinder is constant, CV is constant. Uh, so I can, okay, so I can change this in. I'm gonna have an M CV DT is equal to how fast heat is coming in or out. Oops. Heat output is just negative heat input, DT minus P DV. Um, there we go. So now we have, oh boy, I have a bunch of things so I'm actually I'm actually going to want to get rid of this dt. This is my this is my ultimate goal here. Well, not my ultimate goal, but it's one of the it's one of the goals because there is no time doesn't really matter, right? The actual value of time it's how much time has elapsed, but in a sense that doesn't even matter all that much. It's really a matter of um uh well, another way that what I'm trying to say is uh one thing that I've done earlier in the course is I weighted the, the crank arm position with time. And I said, when, when the crank arm is at the top and the piston is at top dead center, no matter what time it is, if it's one o'clock, two o'clock, 20 milliseconds afternoon, when I'm at that position, I'm at a given state in the cycle. So theta is actually my, my, is actually my, my, my unit of time, if you will. Okay. Um, so I'm going to want to replace all of this with how stuff Change. Well, actually, I know that every uh, I know that every function is going to depend on theta. Shall we do that now? Sure. It's well. Okay. Uh, yes. Let's do that now. So I know that everything is going to depend on theta. Right? I know that the temperature inside the system depends on theta. It's a. It's a. Theta fixes where I am in the cycle. I know that time actually depends on uh, theta. Right? Uh, in a sense, we know that dt, how much time has elapsed, is equal to dt d theta d theta. I could write this. Actually, this is equal to, so dt d theta, it's 1 over d theta dt. It's d theta divided by omega. It's the rotational speed. Right. Another way to write this is that d theta is equal to omega dt. This is the definition of the rotational speed. So if my dt is one millisecond and I'm going at one degree per millisecond, then my change of angle is one degree or whatever I made up in this example. Um, and then v is also going to depend purely on theta. So let's see, v is equal to a function of theta so that dv is equal to dv d theta. Uh, oh, sorry. I went one step ahead. Yes, so dv is equal to dv d theta times d theta. So how fast v is changing with theta with how many angles have elapsed. And I could do the same thing for temperature. So the change in temperature is equal to dt d theta times how many angles have elapsed. Okay. Let's put that all in. So now I get M C V D T D theta D theta is equal to D Q in D T. I'm going to keep this as a term. You'll see why. And then I have D T. So this is D T D theta. This is one over Omega D theta minus P D V D theta times D theta. There we go. And now I can cancel out those d theta because they're in every term. I'm going to keep this first line here. So I have made, I'm just going to make some room. We're going to erase a little, a few things here. Just so we have room. And then we'll rewrite our equation. We're very close to the equation that the final form that I want. Okay, so let me write. So we have m the mass times cv dt d theta is equal to dq in dt. 
I put brackets as well around it. To, this is a term. It's a, you'll, you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. But I want to keep this as a unit, this dq dt. 1 over omega minus p dv d theta. OK. Um, let's see. I've got, I've got mass. So I'm going to take the mass. I'm going to divide by the mass and cv everywhere. I'm going to get a dt d theta is equal to 1 over cv and then 1 over mass i'm going to i'm going to put it inside the q this is d q in dt 1 over omega minus p and then the mass is a constant so i'm going to shove it inside the volume so this becomes d v d theta and i have a cv on the bottom like this okay um Let's see, Temp well, so now it's kind of annoying because I've got one differential equation, but I've got pressure, specific volume, uh, temperature. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. So I know that the ideal, I wanna, I'm going to get rid of temperature. So I know that the ideal gas law, so I know that PV is equal to R specific T. So if I take the derivative of this, I know that R specific DT, whatever DT with respect to something, is going to be equal to the derivative of PV. This is PDV plus VDP, like that. OK. Um, let's see. Yes, so I'm going to take this R specific. I'm going to drop it on the bottom. So I can make the substitution. So I have PDV plus VDP, PDV d theta plus VDP d theta is equal to uh, it's 1 over the R specific. I'm going to shove it on the other side of the equation. I'm going to get R specific over CV. DQ in over DT. 1 over omega minus R specific over CV P DV D theta. Okay. A little bit more manipulation. Um, first, I'm going to write on the left there. Uh, remember that for an ideal gas, Cp minus Cv is equal to R. And so if I divide by Cv, this is Cp over Cv is K minus Cv over Cv is 1 is equal to R over Cv. Yeah. So I can get rid of this R specific and Cv. It's basically the value of k. It's, it's k minus 1. So I get a, and then I'm going to bring this term all the way out with that one. So I'm going to get a v dp d theta is equal to rsp over cv. This is k minus 1 dq in dt 1 over omega minus uh, RSP over CV, this is going to be K minus 1, P dV d theta. And then I have a P dV d theta, so I'm going to go minus P dV d theta as well. Okay, uh, let me recombine just those last two terms there. So I get a, uh, here, I'll even divide by, by V. So I have a dP d theta is equal to K minus 1 over V omega dq in dt minus, and then I'll have a, actually, what is this? This is a minus, I have a k minus 1, and there's a minus, so it's k minus 1 plus 1. This is just k p dv d theta and divided by v, specific volume. Awesome. Okay, I thought I would make it without erasing, but let me erase a little bit more oh this is looking good this is looking good i know it's looking complicated now but it actually is but i realize it's because i've done this before but when you've done this before this is actually looking not so bad Okay, erase everything. There we go. 
So let me rewrite this at the top. We have dp d theta is equal to k minus 1 over specific volume omega dq in over dt minus kp. Well, specific volume is big volume over m. And look, I've got one here. I have a big volume over m outside, and I have a big volume over m inside the derivative. So I can cancel out the mass. So this becomes minus kp over big V, d big V, d theta. Okay. And then this is, I can do the same thing here. Here I have a specific volume. This is big volume over the mass. And it says qn. This is the heat input sort of in energy, right, in joules or in kilojoules divided by the mass. So I can cancel out the masses because mass is constant. Um, here, I'm just going to erase it. So this becomes big V on the bottom. And on the top here, this becomes Q in inside the derivative. Like that. Cool. Omega is the rotate. This is my, let's see, what do I want to do? Yeah. So omega is my, this is my rotational speed in radian per whatever, per second, per time, right? Um, I can replace this. So this is in radians. And I know usually for car engines, we like n. n is like the number of revolutions per time. So I could replace this by 2 pi n is equal to omega, realizing that if I use RPM, revolutions per minute, uh, then I have to divide this by 60, right? So this should be revs per second, so that I have sort of, uh, um, I have a sort of a, a, a units that mesh with each other, right? Because I'm going to write dq dt in, in per time, and usually in models, like the units are going to come out to being seconds. So I have to be careful about the units there. Um, and then I want to draw your attention to the V. I said everything changes as a function of theta. Well, you know what V of theta is, right? V of theta is equal to, well, that's the function we had before, right? That's the V, uh, the clearance volume multiplied by, and then we had this one plus RC minus one, and then blah, 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 sine theta, and so on. So I have this big function for what V of theta is. And it's only a function of theta. And yeah, it's an ugly function, but I can differentiate it to get v prime of theta is equal to dv d theta. It's going to be equal to, there's a clearance volume, and then the 1 is going to go away. I'm going to have r minus 1, and then blah, 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 blah. And then some weird function of sines and cos of theta in there. But I can write this as a, a, I can write this as a closed function. If I know what theta is, then I know what, uh, how fast the volume is changing with theta. So this particular term, so this V here is not something that I'm looking for. This is a function that I already know if I fix the geometry of the engine. This function, same thing. So instead of writing it like this, just to make that clear, I'm going to write this as V prime. So this becomes dP of d theta is equal to k minus 1 over V of theta. This is a known function. Um, 2 pi n in revolutions per second and dq in dt, the heat transfer, minus kp, v of theta, and then v prime of theta. These are two known functions. And now that's essentially it. So I know that if so, if we're if we're disregarding intake uh, and exhaust for now. So let's say that I erase. Oops. Um, so let's say that I here. I'm just going to draw over it in in some kind of purple. So if I uh, forget about intake and exhaust, and I start from this point, and I say now. This is bottom dead center. And we'll usually say that this is at theta is equal to minus pi, right? Remember our zero. Top dead center, theta is equal to zero degrees. And this all, well, because I have this 
2 pi on the bottom. This assumes that all of my angles are in radians. So minus pi. And then we start going up from here. This is when I've closed the intake valve. Pressure is equal to whatever my initial pressure is. Um, that's it. That's all I need. Pressure is equal to P1. And then we're going to compress through and then expand. And I'm going to assume that we expand out to here and the exhaust valve would open right at the end. And then we're gonna just disregard intake and exhaust for now so that our, our process is one like there, bam, like that. This is what we're gonna simulate first. We'll add the valves and stuff afterwards. So theta is equal to minus pi, P is equal to P1. Um, this is my initial condition. Well, if I take those values and I shove them in here, so if I know theta is equal to minus pi, then, and I'm assuming that I know everything about the engine, so known parameters. So K little L stroke bore, uh, the big R, blah, blah, blah. All of these parameters are known. Uh, the compression ratio and so on. Uh, so if I know all of these parameters, then look, I can plug everything in, right? I know K, I can compute V of theta at minus pi. It should give me just the bottom dead center volume, two pi. I have to pick N, the speed at which my engine is rotating. This is gonna be a constant. It's not a geometric constant, but it's an operational constant. Uh, this DQ, I'm gonna say what this is in a second. I have a K, V, I can compute V prime. And P, well, if P is equal to minus pi, this P is just, um, this P is just minus, um, it's just P1, it's the initial pressure. Then I can write what dP d theta is. And then I could say, well, let's assume this is constant, but the slope is constant. I'm gonna integrate for like 0.1 radian. And then I'm going to integrate, the, the piston will move up a little bit and then the pressure will go up a tiny little bit. Now I have a new value of theta V, V prime P and so on. I can start integrating and now I'm doing a numerical integration. So this is actually this, here I'm gonna circle it in red. I said red, because this equation here with the initial condition, and I'm going to add a little bit there. So that equation there is the, it's the generator. It's actually is the first law of thermodynamics written in differential form where I'm using pressure as my dependent variable and theta as my unit of time. Theta is how I track how the process is moving forward. I need to add one more little bit, which is how much work am I doing, right? Afterwards, once I have the curve of P of theta, I could write V of theta and then actually do like a, a little summation of the area. But it turns out there's an easier way to do this. We've said before, this is a simple fluid. And if you, if you rewind a little bit, you'll see I said that the, the definition of uh, an element of work out was equal to P dV. Well, I know work should um, be, let's see, work uh, is gonna, in this case, it's the amount of work done is going to vary with theta. I'm gonna take the dW done per unit of angle. It's gonna be equal to P dV d theta, which is actually is equal to P V prime of theta. And so now I can just add a new extra, uh, an extra initial condition, which is that initially at minus pi works equal to a constant to go to zero. And then that second equation is basically, look what this is, this is PDV as I change theta work that the variable W that is basically, it's basically the summation itself. It's actually, as we're integrating, if I integrate those two equations simultaneously, which is really not, it's only a very small little bit harder than integrating one OD numerically at a time. Then if I do this, I get the pressure history as a function of theta. And I also get, what do I get? I get the pressure history as a function of theta and I get the work done, the net amount of work done at any point in 
uh, in this process as a function of theta such that the value of the work at the last position, well, that's the network through the process. And that is it, integrate. Integrate until theta is equal to pi. So we go from minus pi, zoop, all the way to pi, and we're done. There is one little detail, which is, what is this dq dt? Well, dq dt is what represents this here. This is going to represent uh, the thermal physical processes. So if I have heat transfer out, if I have heat loss, for example, then my dq in dt is going to be equal to, I could say this is, um, it's going to be a, a, it's normal to model heat transfer. It's, it's very frequent to model heat transfer as just a lumped uh, effective um, uh, heat convection term. So there'll be a h heat transfer coefficient times the area as a function of theta times the difference in temperature. The temperature in the cylinder minus whatever it is. In, particular, in this particular case, it should be the temperature of the engine block. Yeah, if you remember heat transfer, well, I have to put a little negative sign because this would be, this should be heat loss, right? When the temperature of the gas, here it's T of theta, when the temperature of the gas is higher than the temperature of the block, this whole thing is going to be positive. And A, again, A of theta I have. We've derived this in this course. Um, and H is going to be based on some model. Now, this will tell me how much heat is lost instantaneously. So if I compute this function at any point in time, and H is actually kind of a, a, a little bit of a tricky function. It's going to be a function of the gas velocities. Usually, it's a function of the piston velocity and the temperature, the pressure, and the blah, blah, blah. So I have to compute a few things there. Um, so if I put this term into this dq dt, then I'm going to be integrating compression with heat loss. So all the way out to, let's say, the point where ignition starts. And when ignition starts, well, I still have heat loss, but now I need to add a new term, which is the heat release. So there's going to be, so we're going to be defining thermal processes, mainly heat loss and uh, and combustion. So this is uh, dq dt heat loss. There's going to be dq in dt combustion, which is going to be equal to some kind of other function, which will be valid for the point of uh, ignition all the way out to when ignition, when combustion ends. End of combustion where we return to just a pure heat loss model. So when both of these are active, I just sum, I'm going to be dq dt heat loss plus dq dt combustion. What's this value? I'm going to shove this into this term, compute what that value is instantaneously, run for as long, so run for a little step to know the next value of pressure, recompute this. It sounds daunting, it's not this bad. And that is it. This is how we would compute. Uh, this is how we uh, would formulate the problem, I should say of um, the, how we formulate the problem of a uh, um, internal combustion engine, but without separating the processes. So without doing our ideal analysis where we're separating out the processes, analyzing them independently. And now this gives us the flexibility to actually um, model and solve the problem with real physical processes. Um, in this case, heat loss combustion that takes a certain amount of time. Um, there's going to be as well. We're going to bring in afterwards, although it's not going to be included in this particular part of the model, but we're going to bring in friction and so on.